Imagine for a moment that you are walking through your feedlot or your pasture. The sun is beating down on your neck and the smell of cattle is in the air. You look down at the ground, specifically at a fresh pile of manure from your prize steer. What do you see? If you see bright yellow kernels of corn staring back at you, whole and untouched, you are not just looking at digested food. You are looking at money. Your hard-earned money sitting there in the dirt, completely wasted. Every single kernel that passes through the animal without being digested is a thief that is stealing from your wallet. It is a terrifying thought for any cattle producer. You spent money to grow that corn, or you spent money to buy it. You spent fuel to transport it, and you spent time feeding it, and the cow simply let it pass right through. This brings us to the ultimate debate that has divided the cattle industry for decades, the battle of cracked corn versus whole corn. Most people think the answer is obvious. They think you must crack the corn to get the value. But what if I told you that everything you think you know about processing grain might be wrong? What if I told you that under certain conditions, spending money to crack corn actually lowers your profit margin and hurts the health of your animal? We conducted a comprehensive weight gain test comparing these two methods side by side, and the results were shocking. They defy the common logic that most feed salesmen try to push on you. In this video, we are going to reveal the truth about starch availability, the hidden dangers of acidosis that nobody warns you about, and the exact results of the weight gain test that could save your farm thousands of dollars this year. You need to pay close attention because the difference between profit and loss is often hidden in the details that others ignore. Do not let your farm become a statistic of inefficiency. Stay with me because we are about to crack this wide open. To understand why this test is so critical, we first have to understand the biology of the beast we are feeding. The cow is a ruminant. It is a biological fermentation vat on four legs. When you feed corn to a cow, you are not actually feeding the cow directly. You are feeding the billions of bacteria and protozoa living inside the rumen. Those microscopic workers are the ones who break down the feed and turn it into energy and protein that the cow can use to put on muscle and fat. Here is the problem with corn. The corn kernel is designed by nature to survive. It is a seed. It wants to be planted, not eaten. To protect the valuable starch inside, the corn kernel is wrapped in a tough outer skin called the pericarp. This pericarp is like a fortress wall. It is incredibly resistant to water and it is resistant to the enzymes that bacteria produce. If the bacteria cannot break through that wall, they cannot get to the starch. And if they cannot get to the starch, the kernel travels through the four chambers of the stomach, through the intestines, and ends up on the ground behind the cow exactly as it went in. This is why the industry developed the idea of processing corn. Whether it is cracking, rolling, steam flaking, or grinding, the goal is the same. We want to break that fortress wall. We want to shatter the pericarp so the rumen bacteria have immediate access to the high energy starch inside. It sounds like the perfect solution, does it not? It seems logical that if we break the corn, the cow gains more weight. But here is where the trap lies, and this is the part where most cattlemen lose money without realizing it. There is a delicate balance in the rumen. If you make the starch too available, if you grind that corn too fine or process it too heavily, the bacteria fermented too fast. When starch ferments too quickly, it produces a massive amount of lactic acid. This drops the pH level of the rumen dangerously low. This condition is called acidosis. When a cow has subacute acidosis, it does not necessarily die, but it stops eating, it feels sick, its stomach lining gets burned. And guess what happens to your weight gain? It crashes. So, you have a situation where you spent extra money to process the corn, thinking you were helping, but you actually caused the animal to stop gaining weight efficiently. It is a cruel irony. You paid more to get less. So, we have to ask the question, is the cost of processing the corn worth the risk? Or is the cow's natural ability to chew, combined with whole corn, actually the superior method for certain stages of growth? Before we reveal the results of the weight gain test, I want to invite you to join a community that takes this business seriously. 
If you want to dominate the cattle industry and stop losing money on rookie mistakes, you are in the right place. Welcome to Biggest Bulls and Cow. We are here to turn your operation into a powerhouse. Go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. Do not just watch from the sidelines. Join us and let us build a more profitable future together. Now let us dive into the weight gain test. We set up a controlled environment to settle this debate once and for all. We took a group of steers, all of similar genetics and similar starting weights, and we divided them into two distinct groups. Group A was the whole corn group. Group B was the cracked corn group. For 90 days, we monitored everything. We measured their daily intake to the ounce, we measured their waste, and most importantly, we measured their average daily gain. Let us look at group A first. These steers were fed whole, shelled corn mixed with a specific percentage of protein supplement and roughage. Now, the common fear with whole corn is the pass-through effect. And yes, during the first week, we saw whole kernels in the manure. If you were an impatient farmer, you would have panicked right then and there. You would have called the feed mill to order cracked corn immediately. But we waited. And something interesting happened. As the steers adjusted to the diet, their chewing behavior changed. When a cow eats whole corn, it is forced to chew more aggressively. This mechanical action of chewing stimulates the production of saliva. Why does saliva matter? Because cow saliva is a natural buffer. It contains sodium bicarbonate. It naturally neutralizes the acid in the stomach. So the steers in group A, eating the whole corn, maintained a much more stable rumen pH. They were healthier. They stayed on feed consistently. They did not have the ups and downs of feed intake that we often see with high energy diets. They were steady biological machines. Now let us look at group B. These steers received cracked corn. The particles were broken open, exposing that white, powdery starch. On paper, this diet had more available energy. The bacteria could attack it immediately. In the first 30 days, Group B exploded out of the gate. They gained weight rapidly because the energy surge was massive. However, as we moved into day 45 and day 60, we started to see the problems. We noticed that some steers in Group B would eat a huge meal one day and then barely touch their feed trough the next day. This is the classic sign of acid overload. Their stomachs were burning. Because the corn was already cracked, they did not have to chew as much. Less chewing means less saliva. Less saliva means less buffering against the acid. The efficiency of Group B started to wobble. While they were accessing more starch, their bodies were fighting a constant battle against acidosis. This creates a hidden cost that does not show up on a spreadsheet until you weigh them. So, what were the final numbers? This is the part that will surprise you. At the end of the 90 days, the steers on the cracked corn diet, Group B, did have a slightly higher total weight. They gained, on average, about 3.2 pounds per day. The steers on the whole corn diet, Group A, gained about 2.9 pounds per day. Now, you might hear that and say, well, the cracked corn won. It produced more weight. But wait, you are forgetting the most important part of the business equation. You are forgetting the cost. Cracking corn is not free. You have to pay for the milling. If you do it yourself, you are paying for the roller mill, the electricity or the PTO fuel, the labor, and the maintenance on the machine. If you buy it from a feed mill, they are charging you a premium for that processing. When we calculated the cost of gain, which is the only number that truly matters to your bank account, the results flipped. The cost to produce one pound of beef was actually lowered in the whole corn group. Why? Because even though they gained slightly less weight per day, the feed was significantly cheaper and the cattle had fewer health interruptions. The profit margin per head was higher for the steers fed whole corn. This is the secret that equipment manufacturers do not want you to know. For cattle that are under 800 pounds or cattle that are on a high roughage diet, cracking the corn is often a waste of money. Young cattle chew very effectively. They process the corn with their teeth better than a machine can. However, there is a nuance here and you must understand this distinction. As cattle get heavier, getting closer to their finishing weight of 1,200 or 1,300 pounds, they tend to chew less. They just want to gulp the feed down. 
At that stage, late in the finishing phase, switching to cracked corn can give you that final push of energy needed to lay down the marbling and the fat cover. But for growing cattle, for the majority of the feeding period, whole corn proved to be the king of efficiency. There is another factor called the associative effect. When you feed whole corn, it behaves differently in the rumen than processed corn. Because it ferments slower, it allows the fiber-digesting bacteria to survive better. If you feed cracked corn with hay, the acid from the corn kills the bugs that digest the hay. So you end up wasting the value of your hay. With whole corn, the pH stays higher and the cow can digest both the corn and the hay efficiently. It is a synergistic relationship. Imagine the thousands of tons of corn that are processed every year unnecessarily. Imagine the electricity wasted. Imagine the dusty feed causing respiratory issues. Whole corn is clean. It is dust-free. It flows easily in the feeder. And as our test proved, it puts money in your pocket by keeping your cost of gain low. The mistake many farmers make is looking at the manure and reacting emotionally. They see a few kernels and think they are losing the farm. But studies show that even if 5% or 10% of the whole corn passes through, the cost of that lost corn is usually less than the cost of processing tons and tons of feed. You can afford to lose a little bit of corn out the back end if you are saving a massive amount of money on the front end. So, how do you apply this to your farm starting tomorrow? First, evaluate the size of your cattle. If they are under 800 pounds, seriously consider turning off the roller mill. Let them chew. Let their natural biology work for you. Second, look at your roughage. If you are feeding a diet that is very high in grain, whole corn is safer. It acts as its own roughage because of the chewing required. It is a built-in safety mechanism against bloat and acidosis. Third, do your own math. Call your feed supplier. Ask them the price difference between whole shelled corn and cracked or rolled corn. Take that difference and multiply it by the tons you feed in a year. That number might shock you. It might be enough to buy a new truck or pay off a significant debt. Do not just follow the herd. Just because your neighbor cracks his corn does not mean he is making more money than you. In this business, the one who understands the science and the economics is the one who survives. The weight gain test is not just about pounds on the scale. It is about dollars in the bank. We have covered the biology of the rumen, the fortress of the pericarp, the danger of acidosis, and the economic reality of processing costs. You now possess knowledge that puts you ahead of the vast majority of producers. You know that faster digestion is not always better digestion. You know that seeing a kernel in the manure is not the end of the world, but a trade-off for a healthier, more stable rumen. But the world of cattle nutrition is deep. There are secrets about protein synthesis, mineral absorption, and water quality that can double your results if you know how to use them. This video on corn is just the tip of the iceberg. We are preparing a series of investigations that will challenge everything you thought you knew about raising beef. We want to hear from you. Have you tried feeding whole corn? Have you seen the difference in manure? Or are you a die-hard believer in processing? Go down to the comment section right now. Don't be shy. Write down your experience. Tell us what works on your ranch. Your comment might help another rancher on the other side of the world save his herd. We are a community here. We learn from the data, but we also learn from each other. If you found value in this detailed breakdown, if this saved you from wasting money on unnecessary processing, then you know what to do. This channel, Biggest Bulls and Cow, is dedicated to the pursuit of excellence in livestock. We do not deal in rumors, we deal in results. Make sure you are subscribed. Click that bell so you never miss an alert. Share this video with your feed supplier. Share it with your neighbor. Share it with your sons and daughters who are learning the trade. Let us raise the standard of the industry together. Thank you for your time and your attention. Keep your cattle healthy, keep your pencil sharp on those costs, and keep learning. We will see you in the next video, where we will tackle another controversial topic that impacts your bottom line. Until then, happy farming!